This video is for anybody that might be struggling with creating the wooden buttons for the front end loader. Um, both of the buttons are really done with the same strategy and the same sketch, just a couple different dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on my front plane. I'm going to go ahead and straighten it up by clicking on front and I'm just going to start off with two rectangles. I see this large section here as a rectangle and then this section over here. I'm going to ignore that corner that's been cut off. That's just an edge treatment um, or a chamfer that I'm going to put on later. And then the domed part or that spherical portion on the top of it, I'll deal with that here in a minute too. So I'm going to start off at my origin and do one kind of thicker rectangle and then one a little bit skinnier rectangle. So I've taken care of the actual button portion, the part that's going to go into the hole, and this is going to start off the dome. I'm then going to go ahead and grab my three-point arc tool. I'm going to click on the end to start it somewhere over here in this empty spot on the other side of the button, and then up here somewhere. On shape will fix the rest of it for me. I'm going to revolve this here in a minute, and right now, since this is not a gray area, it's not a closed profile. And Onshape's not going to let me pick this as one of my shapes. So I'm going to grab the line tool, and I'm going to close that off. If it bothers you that this line here is kind of dangling over the edge, we can trim that away, or you could just leave it. I'll go ahead and trim it. So I'm going to grab my pair of scissors and trim. Okay, so now we're ready for some dimensions. So I like to put large dimensions on there first. So I'm going to work with this 0.45. So dimension all the way from the top of the button all the way to the origin. That's going to be 0.45, and it should shrink my part. Great. So I'm going to zoom in on it. And I'm even going to move this dimension in a little bit, and we'll go from there. All right, so I need another dimension. So I've got this 0.125 and the 0.25. Let's just do them in order. So from here to here, that's going to be 0.125. And then from here to here is going to be 0.25. Okay, so I've taken care of the dimensions that are datumed, um, our baseline from the top of it down to the bottom of it, and now let's do with these diameters. So we've got a small diameter of 0.5, that's just the bottom portion. Then I've got a diameter of 0.75 that makes the other part. And remember, because we're going to revolve this, it's going to double all my dimensions. So I need to cut them in half. So this dimension, instead of being 0.5, is going to be 0.5 divided by 2. And then from here to here, instead of this being 0.75, it's going to be 0.75 divided by 2. Great, and now we've got this dimension to put on here. This is going to be my spherical radius, or the button's radius, of 0.625. Now, for some reason, mine is not all black, and I think it has something to do with this dimension is now gray. So I'm going to delete this dimension and put it back. So from here to here, that should have been 0.45. So I don't know what went weird with that dimension, but something was wonky a minute ago, um, and it turned gray anyway. So I'm not quite sure what caused that, but I just deleted it and put it back on. Everything is black, and that's what I want. So this is going to be the wooden button 1.2, or the half-inch button. If I'm trying to create the 3 8 button, or the 3.8, the only thing that's going to change is this number will be mm, 0.5 instead. And this one, instead of being 0.5 divided by 2, will be the 0.375 divided by 2. And then this one will be, instead of 0.75, it will be 0.661 divided by 2. So it's really just those three numbers are the only thing that's going to change as far as the difference between the two wooden buttons. All right, let's go ahead and finish sketch. I'm going to tilt it a little bit so I can see it in 3D will revolve. If it doesn't pick them, I'm going to grab all three shapes and I'm going to do an axis of this central part, um, what I did the dimensions off of. And that should give me the whole button. So that's the main portion and now I'll go ahead and do my edge treatments. Remember, edge treatments are really fillets and chamfers. Anytime I want to round stuff over, just corners or edges, or anytime I want to knock off edges. Well, since this is going to get pushed into a hole, we're going to put a chamfer on the end of it that makes it easier to go ahead and shove in there. So I'll grab my chamfer tool, and it says that it's 0.03 by 45 degrees. 
Well, anything that's at a 45 degrees means that it must have the same rise and run. So 0 0.03 over and 0 0.03 up. So I can use this equal distance, or if it really bothered me, I could say distance and angle. So I could put 0 0.03 at 45 degrees, but since it's 45 degrees, I'm just going to go with the equal distance and make it easy on myself. So 0 0.03 is my distance, and I want that surface right there. And say OK. I'll turn off my work features, and that should be everything I need to go ahead and create the button. And I guess everything that you need to be able to create the other button as well. Hopefully that at least answers any questions that you have about the wooden buttons.